Hello, back to our two years anniversary stream of Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yes, already two years, which is a hell of a time. And uh, I have two uh, beautiful veterans of Kingdom Come Deliverance here as well, because they started even earlier than me, I think, right? You start, when did you start, guys? For me, it was seven years ago. What, what when was it 2014 at some point right or 2013 13 yeah we moved wow. to prague in 2013 and it was march when you started wow. work so yes. just to clarify we have here um two two wonderful people jo joanna novak who is the historian or historical advisor uh, at, Hello, at, at warhol studios you might have seen her somewhere already because sometimes he, she's she's a, a happy uh Let's call it, let's call it victim for journalists because they want to talk to her very often, and uh, Jakub, uh, who is uh, the who was the environment lead, who is responsible for the environment or uh, the way we went in, in Kingdom Come uh, deliverance, and he will they will tell us something about today about the way how we built the world of Kingdom Come, right? So maybe uh, Jakub can you can maybe start and tell us what. Uh, what what does it mean to be an environment artist? How do you get there? How did you hear about Wall Studio since you started with the with the Kickstarter running or before, before the Kickstarter? Before. Mm -hmm. Fairly fond of uh, art in general uh, from the beginning, basically from what I remember. Uh, and later on, I got uh, caught by a game art because uh, for a young lad, it's uh, really. Uh, uh, I guess captivating. There's a lot of demons and zombies and uh, crazy environments that you can uh, that you can explore. Uh, like nowadays, I'm not so much into it, but uh, it's definitely something mm. that can grab a young uh, man's heart. Uh, so I kind of started to uh, look into it. Uh, started to work on my uh, personal 3D projects and uh, just tests. I started to, to create some small things following tutorials on the internet uh, and eventually I started looking for a, a school that could teach me do game uh, visuals uh, better but I couldn't find any. Uh, I enrolled on uh, School of Informatics because it was kind of close to games uh, but the, it wasn't too much for me to be honest. I thought that by no... Too most, hard you mean? Too much? Too hard. Uh, well, I've kind of imagined that if I follow this through, I would end up with a job that would require mm -hmm. me uh, sitting in an office uh, over an eight hours a day and not seeing daylight much. Mm -hmm. So I've decided... <laughs> basically, hey. <laughs> just what basically. we did during the uh, making of Kingdom Come. Exactly, so I ended up at the exact same place <laughs> I didn't want to end up, yeah. but uh, from a different side. When I started uh, studying this school, it was actually like the analog nature of it or the the classical nature of it was uh, one of the best things that uh, that caught me there creating all the props with your hands and modeling small little buildings uh, small little people and then animating them was, was really nice very beginning probably the informatics uh, i've studied it on high school as well so i had a little bit of background there as well uh, but I was also uh, like drawing and uh, doing all the artsy stuff uh, in the meantime anyway mm -hmm. since I was a kid so I worked on my personal 3d projects from I don't know 15 years old something mm -hmm. like that uh, and that's actually where I where I learned everything I know about 3D art. And how did you get wind of uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance then? It was named as a leak, but it was just a presentation on uh, GDS, Game Developer Session in uh -huh. uh, Prague. Roman Zavada was presenting a vertical slice of uh, what was there at that time. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful piece of environment uh, below Ratae. Is it the vertical slice that later ended up in the yes. first Kingdom Come stream, or was it? Or, no, it was already uh, no, in the. No, it was, yeah, that was, it was already yeah, in the yes. in the Kickstarter yeah, video. This was definitely the best uh, real-time graphics I've ever seen. So I thought, hey, it looks really cool, mm. and uh, I wanted to apply. Uh, I applied, and uh, after three months, I received but an answer. <laughs> no, no. 
No, well, I heard from Peter Pekat, who was here before. He said uh -huh. that after one year, he got an answer like, "Oh, well, uh, we got we got your mail a year ago. Uh, yeah. Would you still like to work with us?" He said yes, and now he's. I mean, good things take time, right? So exactly. Yeah, there are still some people waiting. What about you, Johanna? So you are the historic historian, historical advisor at the team. How did you get wind of everything? I know that there's a funny or romantic story between. Uh, the two of you, so maybe you can tell us something about that. Now that there's Valentine's Day tomorrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Listen, well, I don't know if I shall skip maybe... It'll be better maybe... for everybody if you tell them. The romantic part? The <laughs> romantic part. <laughs> and also you thanks to the to wonderful no, uh, opportunities I had, to thanks to some museums and especially Moravian okay. Gallery. They took me for the practice. Thanks to them I could have been following some research. Uh, historical research mm -hmm. and I decided to stay because I got really like interest in following my dreams and digging into some stuff mm -hmm. and of course to stay with my uh, boyfriend <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah but I never um, I really never thought that we would be actually working together because um, as I uh, faced reality after um, following my dreams of working with the heritage. Uh, I actually, I always was also drawing so into art, but my dad told me that I would never get money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so so I at least tried to somehow use my skills in the um, like uh, preventing the old architecture, mm -hmm. and I was very into it. And unfortunately. I found out that getting a job in that field to secure the old buildings and everything mm -hmm. is not a very good paid job. Unlike video game exactly. development where we earn thousands and thousands of, course, of, of, course, yeah. of nerd money, <laughs> nerd yeah, points. I've been like um, actually doing a lot of other things, had different jobs and when the, finally the opportunity happened that Kuba was in Warhol Studios and he told me about the someone. game and I was looking at it and I'm looking for someone, I was so like wow, I would really love to like work too. on such a great ambitious project and I was even like looking at well, what concept so. artists are doing in here, no? what this kind of this work about and he's like hey but actually you know like they are looking for somebody that could do this advisory the research for like, several yeah. like subjects, That's including mm -hmm. the That's art right. history, yeah. and you are very into it, so That's maybe you shouldn't care. apply. Mm. And I was like, oh my god, they would definitely like not me take me part. because I'm not like, I'm Czech or man. like uh, I'm his girlfriend, and so and yeah. this would be looking weird. But for like I think until the day of the when actually Dan asked me for interview. Mm -hmm. He didn't know that we are together, so that was kind of good. <laughs> and yeah, and his one of his first questions was like, "Can you speak Czech?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yes, good." And then actually, all the interview went super, super nice. Mm -hmm. I was then having a conversation with the former um, concept art leader, Esteban Janik, and yeah, with Dan, and I think Victor Botson was maybe mm -hmm. there. And we talked a lot of the, about the medieval paintings on the no, wall and exactly. art, and I was very like intrigued about no, that. No, and it looked like the the, we yeah. understand each other. And prayer. actually, oh, I was I think the most I lucky because I got the answer right after two months <laughs> <laughs> that um, they would like to You're yeah they, they would like to hire me, but um, they need to uh, if I can wait half of a year because they don't know if <laughs> the project will actually have the money. <laughs> So I started like informally to um, cooperate with guys since I guess September, October 2013. But officially I was enrolled in was um, in 2014 also in March. I jumped over the fence literally, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice parkour stuff. Oh shit, he's a bow shooter. Oh no. So now that I have you here, I mean one of them, I would call it a feature almost. One of the main getting, features. Getting lost in the bushes. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea what, what I'm. Mean. How should I get out of this situation? Just use cheats, come on. Uh, That's how we do it. 
And the point I wanted to ask, so you guys are creating the world, you and your team, making sure it looks as it looks and you are observing this or how does the cooperation work? Every task, let's say windmill or house or like special, special blade in a forest, can start from uh, two, uh, maybe three, but mostly two uh, different teams. Uh, the one is design team from which ideally it starts. The second one is a concept art team from which it usually starts. Uh, the, when it starts from the design, uh, they are also getting advised by the historian here. If it actually was here, like, uh, was this a good place for a windmill? Is there any records of windmill being there uh, or not? Uh, but once that's settled, uh, it's pushed to uh, concept art to create some concepts. Uh, then to us we can start working on it. The, the other way is uh, when design, when it's something that's not really important, because design is mostly concerned about the story, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the world is really huge, so a lot of things have nothing in common with story. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need to go there to, to progress in, the, in your quest to uh, avenge your parents uh, and find in the soul. Uh, mm. Yeah, in, <laughs> in the, the, in the mill, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so in those cases, it usually starts directly from concept art and from uh, from Asha, uh, yes. because uh, they know the maps already. They they have some mm -hmm. historical mm -hmm. maps, some uh, other references. What was there? What was where? Mm. Uh, at that area that we are trying to to reproduce, and based on that, they can tell. Hey, we need a new village here, or a new maybe village is a bit. Too big. Mm -hmm. Design should probably uh, say something about that. But uh, let's say a windmill. That's something yes. that they can definitely place. Uh, and now, place especially with now that I'm standing in a windmill, mm -hmm. I guess you just you don't know per se how a 15th century windmill. Well, probably you might know, but I guess you so you step in and try to tell them how they're supposed to build Work. these things. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Well, actually, I wanted to start that designers are giving us this like uh, first initial point, but Kuba is actually more precise because, yeah, when concept art is actually visualizing the idea, he's not only visualizing the story, the dialogue, the people, but exactly the whole environment. And usually mm. uh, when we were trying to do this environment for the for the game, we went to the places and concept artists, they, the quests weren't written yet, but they were already like going through some, let's say, Rataev fields around and they said, oh my god, look at this rock or like, oh, this is super hill, something that totally doesn't concern like designers per se when they are writing about lo uh, love story of Henry or something. Mm -hmm. But when they are then meeting together with the concept and concept like, Hey, when you'll be inventing Ratai, maybe you can do some interesting hey. quest or so here because oh, yeah. it looks super nice, like in reality, mm -hmm. and we can really awesome. make it looking even better. And they're like, yeah. oh yeah, good idea. And so that we mixed each other, you mm -hmm. know, really we, we shuffled the idea. Also like include maybe my um, input, like uh, give some inspiration to the guys, even if they haven't got any requests. So like. Oh, hi guys, maybe if you'll be doing something about the Wiimam, can you just add this or that or something? And definitely then concept art was like you know, in touch with me and we were trying to, you know, prepare some concepts for that. We passed to Envero. How does a field trip look like? Because we actually really went there, right? And did make pictures and... How, how does this work? I mean, you have. I actually met you yeah. there. That was, it the, was first the first trip. time we met? Yes, and it was, I think. And you said, oh, what a handsome guy. It was the day before your birthday, and you told us that you would bring I, some I cake. I probably wasn't I, there. Uh, you were was, there. She was allowed to say that. <laughs> Lucky me then. Yeah, I thought it was, it was super sweet because we met in this monastery. We had this really big trip with all of the graphics, concept artists, and you came, and I was the only person talking to you in German. Oh. And you said, like, Oh my god! <laughs> Finally, someone! Lady who uh, takes care. To, uh, oh, Pla yeah, place okay, okay, manager yeah. or, so, or so, and she uh, really. Probably. Yeah, she, caretaker. Caretaker, like yeah, she, she oh. really like uh, showed us everything, and we talked about many, many things, and it was really great to be there. Uh, in Kingdom Come Deliverance we have many, many places, castles, churches and so on, but of course not all of them are still standing. In, in 
uh, when it comes to the south of a monastery it's still there so we could go there but how do you come up with the church paintings or how the castle and scullets looked like because there's no castle anymore Tallenberg is completely destroyed there's just remains of a tower on some like stone walls how do you make sure that they know what to build <laughs> Well, it's a very difficult task, actually. L luckily, many of the heritage buildings, like old architecture, they've been yeah. prevented by the state. And there are special, you know, like government units that take care of it. So they make like evidence material, like measure the remains or like gather the sources that actually speak about it or gather some um, visual materials where it's at least painted so that we can have some information. Mm -hmm. And based on that and literature and archives and stuff, we try to reconstruct it. But often it comes out that even on these paintings, even or there is only a text about some place and it's very hard to estimate how it could have been looking mm -hmm. at the time. So <laughs> we take the references from the nearest um, area where similar buildings, similar style and similar from similar material could have been done from kind of a, um, where we can find the, the best references for what we want to and of course then we adjust it to the regarding the technical um, requirements or so but usually when yeah just for the visual purposes we can just uh, rely on these resources the references and like church paintings yeah it's like very often we were gathering materials from the different churches here in Czech and Bohemia and in Germany from the same period of time, the same style, where we knew that some part of church was built, like mm -hmm. in Užice, and we really were trying to create something that would actually look believable. To, to make it uh. I'm clicking so fast through the dialogue that I'm not reading it anymore. Yeah, yeah. I should pay more attention. Well, I think it's very difficult to play the hard mode and actually have an interview with anyone. The thing is that they are way stronger than I expected them to be. When we were on Kickstarter, one of the Kickstarter um, stretch goal was actually if you get, pay a certain amount, you get your face painted inside Kingdom Come Deliverance. One of the Stretch goals was that your name will be written on those crosses here. Maybe there's one here. Let me mm -hmm. check. It should be. Should be. Uwe Schneider, yeah. Ryan McAuley, Jack Cross, and Khan. My my plan right now because Chet says don't sell out uh, uh, Timmy. I want to actually. I would want to tell them where he is because they leave one of the guys here. I want to kill this guy very quick and then try to catch the other ones before they. That's I, a very that brave. Tough. That's very tough, right? And mm -hmm. I'm playing the hardcore mode. That's why I'm getting kicked up all the time because I'm yeah, dying yeah. after one hit. Meister Yogi 22 said, I love the ponds in Kingdom Come Deliverance. So the, the water places and stuff. Building a medieval village out of plants. Anything different than if you have to come up with things, if you have to keep it realistic or follow some rules. Okay, if you want to do a like a convincing architecture. It doesn't have to be realistic, but uh, it has to be convincing. That's what's uh, was hard. And also definitely medieval yeah. architecture is much harder than, let's say, sci-fi architecture. With the medieval architecture, of course, everything is more organic. Uh, it's definitely harder to, to create organic stuff. Uh, nowadays, when we can sculpt everything, uh, it's a little bit easier, but still it's uh, more time consuming to, to make it look right. So, yeah, but the, the, the more important thing is uh, when you're trying to make something convincing. So yeah. uh, if you're not trying to do that, it's uh, much easier to create all the houses because uh, you don't care if your walls are of a specific width or mm -hmm. your uh, roof is thick as it should be or if uh, all the materials that mm -hmm. you're constructing the houses from makes sense. Our priority was uh, to make there a are, big know. world that looks uh, very realistic and we had a fairly oh, large sum of money to do that. Of course, if you don't have that, you can't do it. And our priority wasn't to, to fill it to the brim with buildings. Uh, it was really to to make the few buildings that are there look uh, as realistic as possible. Always a problem that, for example, when um, 
When there is a concept art or like uh, graphics working, 3D graphics working on something in science fiction or fantasy, they can um, invent some, some elements and you don't have to give for that any kind of, uh, I guess, um, like uh, reference. And here, when we start with some references, uh, the questions are coming from different angles or like about stuff that I never thought like about from different side or so or like from inside outside and suddenly you come to a moment where you don't have a reference for everything so you have to actually get even deeper for the projects for this like architecture like no. logic to say how to create things and just like in other games or other yeah. projects you don't have to think so much about Did it. Did you yeah. also want to say, sorry, yeah. one more thing, uh, that it kind of lends itself to it, to to be like very, very real and very like uh, functional because uh, what we get usually from, uh, from Asha are plans or like sketches of uh, constructions mm -hmm. and not so much um, pictures or definitely not photos because uh, yeah. most of the stuff is already gone right yeah. so so we have a very like technical approach um, in realize. like from the concept yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. to the problems uh, or to the to the architecture and that's why we are also trying to build it very realistically as well so we are starting from the plants, for example, here, the, the windmill, uh, like all the beams are actually supporting some weight. They are not there as, a, as just a decoration. Uh, it makes sense for them to be where they are. That, that's totally true. I think I, I have the strong feeling that just by looking into the world here, you can actually, I don't want to go to so far and say learn something, but at least you get a very good idea of how it might have looked like. Well. There every are different time, conflicts. Every yeah, <laughs> the, the, there are conflicts all the time because uh, making games is a multi-team production effort, yeah, right. uh, and each team has a different mm -hmm. focus, right? So like, everybody is pulling the rope in a different direction, and uh, you're trying to to get the middle uh, somewhere. You're trying to to get the agreement of everyone on uh, what it actually is. Or not even just the conflicts, it's just that uh, you have to regress, you have to just step back from some ideas. Like, uh, I think that's, that's one of the things I've learned a lot during all of this on seven years. Um, even adding some small elements to it can actually destroy it exactly, or can be too hard or so, so you need to just evaluate if you believe want to fight for this or just say like ah oh, no okay it's, it's okay mm. how it looks and or we don't need it is there anything that you had to graphically completely change uh, game wise to make it fit in the game the, that is not accurate or let's call it at least uh, a compromise or something like that yeah a lot lot of stuff uh, houses houses, <laughs> houses especially because uh, as yeah. i said uh, like one of the great uh, concerns uh, with environment is that it's actually functional in the, mm -hmm. in the program of the game, right? Uh, the NPCs have to be able to go through the doors. So mm. uh, if you take a look at how doors actually looked at that period, they were much smaller, uh, much, much smaller. Also the windows were much smaller and everything. Because uh, people can naturally just... Uh, crouch or not crouch like uh, a bend, yeah, bend you know your bend neck. your head mm -hmm. uh, like to get through small door or step up. exactly or step yeah. over a, a really uh, a really high threshold yeah, which yeah, were yeah. very common uh, so that's something that wasn't possible at all so our doors are always one by two meters mm -hmm. while in reality the doors would be I don't know, 80 centimeters by 150, maybe? Yeah, and almost like everything that. is very irregular, right? So everything is for organic from... Like, there are some kind of a dimensions that we can follow, like that they already were trying to cut the wood for the beams 40, 40 centimeters, but still, like, we know that in some villages or somebody, just they were building from what they had. So it means they were super irregular and the... Uh, and even the light at home, it was like barely uh, 
clear there, but we have to somehow add some light so that the player don't feel like into the dark pitch night. Many dialogues are happening inside and of course there are some parameters we have to follow for all the game to look good and so and to recognize if it's a day or it's a night and stuff. So yeah, I had to piss me. I think artistic conflicts are worse. Uh, yeah, artistic between, and between design. design. Between design, well design is, is art on itself. Uh, between design and concept, I think that's something that's really hard because yeah. nobody nobody has uh, a truth there. It's it's art. It can be done in any way. Like you yeah. can't say objectively that one way is better than the other. Some two theses about some one thing very difficult to give the final clear one hundred percent answer. There is no right, and yeah. it's not like um, mathematics where you get like one hundred trials with the yeah. same result. It's it's like many of the research are still ongoing and everything. <laughs> yeah, Tell me. Be strong. Yeah, but it looked so good this time. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm listening to you. Continue. Yeah. Well, just to sum up, it's it's like um, it's 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 very easy to like um, doubt somebody's or like. Um, I'm looking to, for a colossus to, by the name. How to call it like, yeah. I heard you were um, clear. To doubt someone's work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and no. to like uh, or like to to yeah. throw it out because they just uh, this is just a um, uh, you know. Uh, subjective opinion or like subjective importance of things so yeah, it's hard. Is there anything that you dislike being in the game? Something that's completely out of order or something that is uh, a compromise that were made where you're not too happy about it but in the uh, yeah something yes, like that? Yes but I cannot talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. I think, but in the all in all, I'm correct me if I'm wrong. All in all, I think that's the closest anyway in all the video games I ever saw. The closest you get to real medieval excitement or whatever gameplay environment and so on. You, I, I don't, I don't reckon a game that would go as far as we hmm. uh, went. There are uh, for sure. Well, definitely, I can tell that. We spend oh, yeah. a really a lot of time digging into subject. Like there, there are very. I don't. I cannot recall the stuff that was just done because it was done. Maybe just because it was done in 2011 when nobody of us was even working here and they just wanted to really like find a publisher or just start the project. Maybe something was done and it was somehow included in the game. But. 99% of the stuff was really well, at least couple. thought through. So I think we paid as much as we could attention to it. And if it couldn't look as, as I wished, it's just because we didn't have enough time, enough people, enough budget. I don't know, many reasons. And mm. I accept it. Mm -hmm. I accept it because really at that time, at this moment when we released the game, it was the best what we could have done at that moment with all of these people st spending this, you know, crunching hours and yeah, definitely there was nobody that would like sabotaging <laughs> this that stuff. So, so really, if something, and I know about many things that don't like, uh, like people don't like and um, there are bugs or like bugs. I, I don't change. know. I don't know any bugs. Yeah. But bugs is a good point. Uh, what about environmental bugs? Those are usually the bugs that stay in the game, right? Mm, not necessarily. Not all. Not all. Not but I can I can remember a bug. I don't know if it was on your end or not, <laughs> but it was the flying arrows thing. If you can remember, in the in uh, Przybyslavice, they were stuck flying arrows in the in, ah, the, in the air. In the air. Yeah, is that something on your that's, end? That's fairly common. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not a bug. Come on. That's a feature. It's like yeah. flying. Uh, flying yeah, I mean the the, the world is uh, occasionally <laughs> occasionally you need to uh, forbid player to to go somewhere and uh, what a better solution to it than uh, an invisible collision, right? So. Uh, okay. There are places where these are used. Uh, Previslavice is definitely one of those places. Uh, around Townberg, uh, before you can uh, oh, start open worlding, really, uh, there are also these collisions. And yeah, at, at one point, uh, uh, at the time, uh, 
these were oh. not letting uh, the arrows through. But oh! It's, it's just a <laughs> small right. thing. Right, the collision. Oh. Uh, is there any famous bug or something? Is this the one you that struck out most to you, or? Yeah, definitely not. I mean, I, I'm really not thinking about this as a bug. Like my favorite bug in in Fuck. KCD is definitely the cabbage. Uh, no, no. Cabbage roll. What's that's a feature, come on. You can, yeah. you can throw cabbages uh, from the hill and they roll downhill. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> Sounds yeah. uh, great, actually. Everybody loves it and cabbages do it in real life. You can try it. That's uh, realistic. Exactly. Yeah. You, you should know about this. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite work was definitely about the correlation between uh, closing the inventory and people shooting up in the air. Like, what? This was, yes, this was the, the perfect bug. Because uh, it happened I'm not really sure what the setup had to be, but uh, if it occurred, it was when you were opening the inventory, rather closing the inventory, where the two panes were getting opened, and you just saw how every NPC in the vicinity just shoot up straight in the air. Once I switched it on, actually we were having this playing at work and... <laughs> and the only people I was seeing were actually naked guys without the heads. Like really, none of the clothing Ooh. was actually... <laughs> yeah, and, and only the guys. And they were just like really like headless and clothless. And even if you got closer to oh, me. Oh, you like that. Like, you yeah, and I said like, yay, finally a game for girls. <laughs> yeah. If you're playing the game, the game can occasionally uh, Bug out. Su surprise you, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. But also, when you're creating you the game, it that's pretty much the only thing that the game does. It just surprises you again and again. So now that we are almost at the end again, uh, is there anything in particular that you would like to ask our fabulous uh, guests here? So we have again Jakub Holik, the environment lead for Kingdom Come Deliverance, and uh, Joanna Novak, who uh, was doing the historical research uh, and supported the entire team pretty much with her knowledge about how things should are supposed to look like and then the rest of the team explained why this is not possible. Um, Joanna, what's your favorite thing about Kingdom Come Deliverance? No matter if a piece of asset or emotion or a cutscene or reaction of someone or 10 points for Gryffindor. I love the Suzao Monastery because it was the longest research and the most exciting thing actually. What was it for you? What part of Kingdom Come, what thing, doesn't have to be an asset or a, it sure, can sure. be whatever, right? Yeah, I mean, Music. The, our greatest priority for environment was definitely to make the natural vistas look good and I think we really nailed, nailed it. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we continue. Thank you very much for you guys for being with me uh, in this Thank hour. Thank you for having us. Talking about the monastery, about the uh, historical background, about creating the world, about the conflicts and so on. I think it was super interesting. Anyway, guys, pee pee, pee, pee break as always. See you in a few minutes. And thank you very much, guys, for stopping by. Bye-bye. See you in a second, guys.